What is amazing about a two-stroke, the feeling that you get from riding it. Nothing gets better going out there, all two strokes, two stroke for life. I don't hate four strokes. There's a lot of times I enjoy riding that more than a two stroke. I love the two stroke still. The sound, the smell. Mixing gas, kicking ass, man. But I think for racing, we made a mistake going away from two strokes. A 250F against a 125 two stroke is, is not fair. It's not even comparable anymore. But I just remember coming in going, he's cheating. Like that bike's a cheater bike. It's clear now that somebody f***ed up, that with those decisions, it's changed the sport of motocross forever. And now here we are, $10,000 retail bikes. Like, come on, bring the two-stroke back. Uh, 32 to one. Hi, I'm Randy Richardson. I've been riding motorcycles for over 50 years. And I'm gonna tell you a story about the different strokes in motocross. You ask them what's the difference between a two-stroke and a four-stroke, average person would have no idea what that even means. I would say the biggest differences between two-strokes and four-strokes, one, you have to mix your gas with oil. That's for two-strokes. Uh, four strokes you don't. The sound, the smell. And everybody has probably seen a video of a two stroke going through the whoops and the noise that yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of like viewing a video in 480p versus 1080p. The more pixels, the more clear the image. But just like a 1080p video uses a lot more memory, a four stroke engine uses a lot more parts. So up through the 90s, this led everyone to favor the lighter, cheaper two-strokes. In old thought, four-strokes weren't competitive. They were like a trail bike, you know, it's like a XR. They were just You had to be really on point in two-stroke days, but it also taught you how to carry momentum. With the bikes being a little bit lighter and more nimble, you could rail turns harder. And the general consensus was, well, it's heavier and it's got more moving parts in all this, and that's why this bike needs more CCs to be uh, competitive in the same class as a two-stroke. Based on this old theory, 250cc four-stroke engines were allowed to compete against 125cc two-stroke engines. I think they came up with this math equation that double the CCs on a four-stroke was fair. Their equation really wasn't very good either. Like, if it was thought out better, and, but nobody really kind of knew, like I get it, that nobody knew how good you could make a four-stroke because no one kind of had, had done that. But in the 1997 AMA Supercross Series, Yamaha debuted their revolutionary YZM400, which was the first motocross-specific four-stroke. When Yamaha first put that bike out there at only 400 cc's, even at that, you knew that it was that it was gonna be a game changer. In 1997, Doug Henry won the Las Vegas Supercross aboard the Yamaha YZM400. Doug Henry's win was definitely big, and Vegas that night had to be one of the driest blue groove tracks you've ever seen in your life. And because of that, he could just cruise around the corner and do the triple easy. Everybody else would come out and spin and yeah. And it was right away you knew that this bike was different. This power delivery was different. The shifting points were different. I thought it was going to ruin the sport. I hated the sound. They were just heavy and bulky. The professional racing teams and riders, they switched to the four-stroke because the bottom line is there's no replacement for displacement. The rules allow you to ride a 450cc four-stroke against a 250. And in a little bike class, a 125cc had to race against a 250 Yamaha four-stroke. To allow a 250 four-stroke to race against a 125 two-stroke is not even close. By 2004, the tides had shifted. So then that year, every manufacturer could race a four-stroke, and of course, everybody jumped on board. And the two-strokes were sort of, believe it or not, sort of maxed out. Competing on a two-stroke seemed impossible. The four-strokes were easier to ride, made more power, and the added weight was negligible. By 03, 04, if you were still on a 125, you were bringing a, a spork to a gunfight. You know, it wasn't even a knife. One thing that hasn't changed in the two-stroke versus four-stroke battle is the cost. I kind of saw the writing on the wall that this is the way it's going. I wasn't happy about it. 
I thought it was a mistake, because Mitch even said back then, he goes, the cost is gonna just go through the roof. And now here we are, $10,000 retail bikes. Uh, it's definitely changed the sport. As we've moved more into this four-stroke lifestyle, two-strokes are becoming cooler and cooler again. While the bikes have little presence in professional racing, riders of all skill levels still love to ride two-strokes. And it's just a lot easier, because you know on a two-stroke, if something goes wrong, it's a lot cheaper and easier to fix. A lot of guys can do a top end in their garage themselves. I don't hate four strokes. There's a lot of times I enjoy riding that more than a two stroke, depending on where I'm at, but I love the two stroke stick. The sound, the smell, and, and then like, guys will do throwback, you know, graphics and gear, and it's just, it's just sort of a nod to a cool time in our sport. The one thing that you just can't deny is the sound of a perfectly tuned two stroke engine. It's like hitting the perfect pitch with a tuning fork. And that is a part of the history of motocross that is very romantic. That sound is just, ah, uh, it just, it's awesome.